questions and I had to help somebody study for theirs, so. Yep. Okay, well let's, let's pray. I'm a little behind. 10, uh, uh, 10 please, yep. Yeah. Okay, well let's uh, pray and we'll get started. It's huge. Lord, we thank you for our time together and I pray that you'll uh, guide us and instruct us so that we might glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, so, uh, like I say, I'll, I'll just read this first one and uh, um, so it's the ghost is a woman and uh, she meets uh, a, a, a woman solid person who, who she knows okay uh, that's quite quite out of the question said a female ghost to one of the bright women I should not dream of staying if I'm expected to meet Robert. I'm ready to forgive him, of course, but anything more is quite impossible. How he comes to be here, <laughs> but that is your affair. But if you have forgiven him, said the other, surely I forgive him as a Christian, said the ghost, but there are some things one can never forget. Even but though I, they are Christian. <laughs> but I don't Sorry. understand. Exactly, said the ghost with a little laugh. You never did. You always thought Robert could do no wrong. I know. Please don't interrupt for one moment. You haven't the faintest concept of what I went through with your dear Robert. The ingratitude. It was I who made a man of him. Sacrificed my whole life for him. And what was my reward? Absolute, utter selfishness. No, but listen, he was pottering along on about 600 a year when I married him. And mark my words, Hilda, he'd have been in that position to the day of his death if, I, if it hadn't been for me. It was I who had to drive him every step of the way. He hadn't a spark of ambition. It was like trying to lift a sack of coal. I had to positively nag him to take on that extra work in the other department though it was really the beginning of everything for him. The laziness of men. He said, if you please, he couldn't work more than 13 hours a day. As if I weren't working far longer. For my day's work wasn't over when his was. I had to keep him going all evening, if you understand what I mean. If he'd had his way, he'd have just sat in an armchair and sulked when dinner was over. It was I who had to draw him out of himself and brighten him up and make conversation. With no help from him, of course. Sometimes he didn't even listen. As I said to him, I should have thought good manners, if nothing else. He seemed to have forgotten what I, that I was a lady, even if I had married him. <laughs> and all the time I was working my fingers to the bone for him without the slightest appreciation. I used to spend simply hours arranging flowers to make that pokey little house nice. And instead of thanking me, what do you think he said? He said he wished I wouldn't fill up the writing desk with them when he wanted to use it. <laughs> and there was a perfectly frightful fuss one evening because I spilled one of the vases oh, over some papers of his. <laughs> it was all nonsense, really, because there weren't, there weren't anything to do with his work. He had some silly idea of writing a book in those days, as if he could. I cured him, I cured him of that in the end. One of the ladies really should read this. No, Hilda, you must listen to me. The trouble I went to, entertaining. Robert's idea was that he just slink off by himself every now and then to see, to see what he called his old friend and leave me to amuse myself. But I knew from the first that those friends were doing him no good. <laughs> no, Robert, I said, your friends are now mine. It is my duty to have them here, however tired I am and however little I can afford it. You'd have thought that would have been enough, but they did come for a bit. That is where I had to use a certain amount of tact. A woman who has her wits about her can always drop in a word here or there. I wanted Robert to see them against a different background. They weren't quite at their ease, somehow, in my drawing room. Not at their best. I couldn't help laughing sometimes. Of course, Robert was uncomfortable while the treatment was going on. 
but it was all for his own good in the end. None of that set were friends of his any longer by the end of the first year. <laughs> and then he got a new job, a great step up. But what do you think? Instead of realizing that we now had a chance to spread out a bit, all he said was, well now, for God's sake, let's have some peace. That nearly finished me. I nearly gave him up altogether, but I knew my duty. I've always done my duty. You can't believe the work I had him I had getting him to agree to a bigger house and then finding a house. I couldn't have grudged it one scrap if only he'd take it in the right spirit. If only he'd seen the fun of it all. If he'd have been a different sort of man, it would have been fun meeting him on the doorstep as he came back from the office and saying, come along, Bobs. No time for dinner tonight. I've just heard of a house near Watford and I've got the keys and we can get there and back by one o'clock. But with him, Ah, hello, come in. It was perfect misery, Hilda, for by this time your wonderful Robert was turning into the sort of man who cares about nothing but food. Well, I got him into the new house at last. Yes, I know. It was a little more than we could really afford at the moment, but all sorts of things were opening up before him. And of course, I began to entertain properly. No more of his sort of friends, thank you. I was doing it all for his sake. Every useful friend he ever made was due to me. <laughs> Naturally, I had to dress well. They ought to have been the happiest years of, of both our lives. If they weren't, he had no one but himself to thank. Oh, he was a maddening man, simply maddening. He just set himself up to get old and silent and grumpy. Just sank into himself. He could have looked years longer, years younger, if he had taken the trouble. He needn't have walked with a stoop. I'm sure I warned him about that often enough. He was the most miserable host. Whenever we gave a party, everything rested on my shoulders. Robert was simply a wet blanket. As I said to him, and if I said it once, I said it a hundred times, he hadn't always been like that. There had been a time when he took an interest in all sorts of things, and have been quite ready to make friends. What on earth is coming over you, I used to say. But now, he just didn't answer at all. He would sit staring at me with his big, great big eyes. <laughs> I came to hate a man with dark eyes. <laughs> and I knew it now, and I know it now, just hating me. That was my reward, after all I'd done. Sheer, wicked, senseless hatred. At the very moment when he was a richer man than he'd ever dreamed of being. As I used to say to him, Robert, you're simply letting yourself go to seed. The younger men who came to the house, it wasn't my fault if they liked me better than my old bear of a husband, used to laugh at him. I did my duty to the very end. I forced him to take exercise. That was really my chief reason for getting a great dame. I kept on giving parties. I took him for the most wonderful holidays. I saw that he didn't drink too much. Even when things became desperate, I encouraged him to take up his writing again. It couldn't do any harm by then. How could I help it if he did have a nervous breakdown in the end? <laughs> my conscience is clear. I've done my duty by him, if ever a woman has. So you see why it would be impossible to, and yet I don't know, I believe I have changed my mind. I'll make them a fair offer, Hilda. I will not meet him if it means just meeting him and no more. But if I'm given a free hand, I'll take charge of him again. I will take up the burden once more, but I must have a free hand. And it goes on. <laughs> and then at the end of the chapter, the ghost, which had towered up like a dying candle flame, snapped suddenly. A sour, dry smell lingered in the air for a moment, and there was no ghost to be seen. <laughs> Sorry, we had, to, we had to start with that. <laughs> okay, so this is fairly self-explanatory, right? That this wife, you know, she, she, um, you know, the, the, her only interest in going to heaven was to control her husband some more. <laughs> no 
moral to that story is I can never see the kingdom of God. The word I, or the letter I in there was about 50 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all I, about I, 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 me, me, me. Uh -huh. uh, you ever watch uh, Keeping Up Appearances? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There it is. Uh, exactly. There it is. Yeah. Okay. You girls ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we did, I, I went ahead and did the first one. Okay, so you ready to do the, the second one? Okay, so, um, uh, who's gonna do the third one? The next one, with the lizard? Okay, so, we have a prop for that one. <laughs> the, the book has a red lizard, but We've got we're going to have to go with the, the green. <laughs> Maybe he ate a red lizard. <laughs> oh, yeah, the frog is um, awesome. Okay, so this one is. Yeah, so you're this, in. This one is. Uh, <laughs> this is another good one, too. Okay, so so there's a little bit of, of narration. So if there's narration, I'll just, I'll just chime in. Okay? We're doing chapter 11, right? Uh, yes, this is the first part of chapter 11. <laughs> okay. Because 11 has two stories in it. But we're, we're just going to do the first one. Okay. Whenever, whenever y'all are ready. Okay. Um, <coughs> oh, Reginald, it's you, is it? Yes, dear. I know you expected someone else. Can you, I hope, be a little glad to see even me for the present? I'm sorry. I did think Michael would have come. He is here, of course. He's there far up in the mountains. Why hasn't he come to meet me? Didn't he know? My dear, don't worry. It will all come right presently. It wouldn't have done, not yet. He wouldn't be able to. See or hear you as you are at present. You'd be totally invisible to Michael, but will soon build you up. I should have thought if you can see me, my own son could see me. It doesn't always happen like that, you see. I have specialized in this sort of work. Oh, it's work, is it? Well, when I, oh, well, when am I going to be allowed to see him? There's no question of being allowed, Pam. As soon as it's possible for him to see you, of course he will. You need to be thickened up a bit. How? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm afraid the first step is a hard one. But after that, you'll go on like a house on fire. You will become solid enough for Michael to Perceive, perceive perceive you when you learn to want someone else besides Michael. I don't say more than Michael, not as a beginning that will come later. It's only the little germ of desire for God that will need to start the process. Oh, you mean religion and all of that sort of thing. This is hardly the moment. And from you of all people, well, well never mind. I'll do whatever Whatever's necessary, what do you want me to do? Come on. The sooner we begin it, um, the sooner we begin it, the sooner they'll let me see my boy. I'm quite ready. But Pam, do think. Don't you see you're not, you are not beginning at all? As long as you are in, this, in that state of mind, you're treating God only as a means to Michael. But the whole thickening treatment consists in learning to want God for his own sake. You wouldn't talk like that if you were a mother. You mean if I were only a mother. But there is no such thing as being only a mother. You exist as Michael's mother only because you first exist as God's creature. That, re that relation is older and closer. No, listen, Pam. He also loves. He also has suffered. He also has waited a long time. If he loves me, he let me see my boy. And if he loved me, why was he, why did he take Michael away from me? I wasn't going to say anything about that, but it's pretty hard to forgive, you know. But he had to take Michael away, partly for Michael's sake. I'm sure I did my best to make Michael happy and give up my, own, my whole life. Human beings can't make one another really happy for a long, for long. And secondly, for your sake, he wanted your, is that merely? Merely. Merely instinctive love for your child. That tickles. 
tigresses. tigresses share that you know to turn into something better he wanted you to love Michael as he understands love you cannot love a fellow creature fully till you love God sometimes this com conversion can be done while the instinctive love is still gratified but there was but there was, it seems, no chance of that in your case. The instinct was uncontrolled and fierce and monomaniac. Monomaniac. Mono Monomaniac. Close enough. <laughs> ask your daughter or your husband. Ask <clears throat> our own mother. You haven't once thought of her. The only remedy, is it remedy? Yeah, remedy. remedy was to take away its object. It was a case for surgery when that first kind of love was Thwarted. 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 Then there was just the chance in the loneliness, in the silence, something else might begin to grow. This is all nonsense, cruel and wicked nonsense. What right have you to say things like that about mother love? It is the highest and holiest feeling in a human nature. Pam, Pam, no natural feelings are high or low, holy or unholy in themselves. They are all holy when God's hand is on the rain. They all go bad when they set up on their own and make themselves into false gods. My love for Michael would have never gone bad, not if we've lived together for a million years. You are mistaken and you must know, haven't you met down there? Mothers who have their sons with them in hell, does their love make them happy? If you mean people like the Guthrie, Guthrie women, and her dreadful Bobby, of course not. I hope you're not suggesting if I had Michael, I'd be per perfectly. perfectly happy even in the town, even in that town. I wouldn't be always talking about him till everyone hated the sound of his name, which is what Winifred, Frid, Winifred <laughs> Guthrie does about her breath. I wouldn't uh, quarrel wow. with people for that, oh sorry, for not talking enough, taking enough notice of him, and then be ferociously jealous if they did. I wouldn't go about whining and complaining that he wasn't nice to me because of course he would be nice. Don't you dare suggest that Michael could ever become like that Guthrie boy. Guthrie boy. There are some things I don't stand. What you have seen in the, is it Guthrie? Guthrie's, yeah. Guthrie's and what natural affection turns to the end if it will be, if it will not be converted it's a lie, a wicked, cruel lie. How could anyone love their son more than I did? Haven't I lived only for the memory of all these years? That was rather a mistake, Pam. In your heart of hearts, you know it was. What was a mistake? All that 10-year ritual of grief, keeping his room exactly as he left it, keeping anniversaries, refusing to leave the house, though Dick and Myrtle were both wretched there? Of course they didn't care. I know that I soon learned to expect no real sympathy from them. You're wrong. No man ever felt his son's death more than Dick. Not many girls loved their brothers better than Merle. It was against Michael they revolted. It was against you. Having their whole life dominated by the Tyranny. Tyranny of the past and not really even Michael's past, but your past. You are heartless. Everyone is heartless. The past was all I had. It was all you chose to have. It was the wrong way to deal with sorrow. It was Egyptian, like embalming a dead body. Oh, of course I'm wrong. I'm, oh, of course I'm wrong. Everything I say and do is wrong, according to you. But of course, okay. <laughs> that's what we all find when we reach this country. We've all been wrong. 
That's the great joke. There's no need to go on pretending one was right after that. We begin living. Um, how dare you laugh about it? Give me my boy, do you hear? I don't care about all your rules and um, regulations. I don't believe in God, in a God who keeps mother, keeps mothers and son apart. I believe in a God of love. No one had a right to come between me and my son, not even God. Tell him that to his face. I want my boy and I mean to have him. He is mine. Do you understand? Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Forever and ever. He will be, Pam. Everything will be yours. God himself will be yours, but not that way. Nothing can be yours by nature. What? What? Not my own son? born out of my own body. And where is your own body now? Didn't you come? Didn't you know that nature draws to an end? Look, the sun is coming. Over the mountains there, it will be up any moment now. Michael is mine. How yours? You didn't make him, nature made him, to grow in your body without your will. Even against your will, you sometimes forget that you didn't intend to have a baby baby at all. Michael was originally an accident. Who told you that? That's a lie. It's not true. And it's no business of yours. I hate your religion and I hate and despise your God. I believe in a God of love. And yet, Pam, you have no love at this moment for your own mother or for me. Oh, I see. That's trouble. Wait. Oh, I see. That's the trouble, is it? Really? Re Reginald. Reginald. <laughs> the idea of your being hurt. Being hurt. Oh, being hurt because Lord love you. You needn't bother about that. Don't you know that? You can't hurt anyone in this country. The ghost was silent and open mouth for a moment. More wilted, I thought, by this reassurance that by anything else than has been said. Okay. Well, thank you, girls. That was excellent. Amen. Oh, they, get, they get better all the time. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, so here we have a case of the mother who lost her son. And, you know, what, what's, what's her thing? You know, she wants her son. You know, she, she wants to possess him even after death. So but that's, she's oblivious to the same loss of the rest of her family, right. husband right. and her daughter. Yeah. She's completely, like the other woman with her husband, she's completely self-absorbed. Right, right. right. And this she, is, and I wrote this note down, she has a struggle, especially the last part, between understanding the natural and the spiritual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now another another thing that we see here is that you know she holds mother love as the highest thing. Mm -hmm. You know it is there. There is nothing higher than a mother's love. Yeah. And see that's where she has to get readjusted. That well, no, that has to to be uh, below God and and her relationship with God. And uh, uh, also either. Even the best things in this life have to be redeemed. Everything has to be redeemed, even good things. Well, yeah. right, right after the beginning, I may, might have been the second day, when you talked about, well, I think it was the first lesson, that you talked about, this is about choices. Right. That's why they're on that bus trying to get to heaven instead right. of being in heaven. Right. And the question, the question and the answer here on uh, 103, he says, and she says, what, not my own son, born of my own body, self-absorbed, and his answer is, and where's your body now? That's right. yeah. you, you, you had choices to make. Mm -hmm. Your son is here, 
and where are you now? Yeah. Where's your body? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so it is. It also <coughs> all choices, etc. Okay. Uh, well, we're we're in good time. Uh, we've. I have one question for you. Go yeah. On, mm. on page uh, 88, there is no question of being allowed, Pam. As soon as it's possible for him to see you, of course, he will. You need to be thickened up a bit. You know, remember the, the uh, what is thickened up? Well, uh, right off the bat, remember these people who came off the, the, the bus were just vapors. You know, they're just there's they're, ghosts. They're ghosts. They can't even stand on the grass. Okay. Because right. there's no substance to them. Okay. Whereas heaven itself is is solid. I see. Okay. okay. So the, yeah, that's okay. why they're talking to solid yeah. people. I see. Well, right. when I read that, and and it, uh, it alluded to a lot of the same thing and the several chapters before that, but this thickening up, you know, that's happened several times. He said, if you, he said, if you, uh, if you make better choices and do better things, you can become like us. Yeah. You can yes. reach that point where right. you can. Right. And when you think about that, and the Bible talks about the sanctifying process, that's how we thicken up. Yeah. That's how we become more like Christ is the sanctifying process. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next one. Just pretend this is a, a red lizard. Okay, so who is the who is the uh, the heavenly person? Okay, so so can you can we put this on your shoulder? Sure. All right. Oh yeah, maybe your hair will come up. <laughs> okay. So so up to now we we've, we've kind of had failures, right? People yeah. made the wrong choice. So the, the happy ending is, um, spoiler alert, <laughs> this, this is going to have the happy ending. Um, so um, and, and, uh, so I'll, I'll do some narration, and uh, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrate some of this stuff, and so, so you will say uh, off so soon, and then I'll narrate a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, our narrator is still with George McDonald and they're going from place to place. I, summing, I saw coming toward us a ghost who carried something on his shoulder. <laughs> like all the ghosts, he was unsubstantial, but they differed from one another as smokes differ. Some had been whitish. This one was dark and oily. <laughs> what sat on his shoulder was with a little red lizard and it was twitching its tail like a whip and whispering things in his ear. As we caught sight of him, he turned his head to the reptile with a snarl of impatience. Shut up, I tell you, he said. It wagged its tail and continued to whisper to him. He ceased snarling and presently began to smile, the lizard. Then he turned and started to limp westward away from the mountains. Up so soon. The speaker was more or less human in shape, but larger than a man and so bright that I could hardly look at him. So he's different than others that we've seen. His presence smote my eyes and on my body too, for there was heat coming from him as well as light. This is important. Heat as well as light. Mm -hmm. Like the morning sun at the beginning of a Tyrannous summer day, which we all can identify with right now. Okay, continue. <laughs> yes, I'm off. Thanks for all your hospitality, but it's no good. You see, I told this little chap. That he'd have to be quiet. Oh, I'm sorry, that he'd yeah. have to be quiet if he came with, with, came which he insisted on doing. Of course, his, of course his stuff won't do, do here. I realize that, but he won't stop. I'll, I shall just have to go home. Would you like me to make him quiet? I not, um, of course I would. Oh, of course I would. Then I will kill him. Oh, ah, look out. Oh, ah, look out. You're burning me. 
keep away. Don't you want don't you want me killed? You didn't say anything about killing him at first. I hardly meant to bother you with anything anything so discreet as drastic. Oh drastic as that. It's the only way. Shall I kill it? Well, that's a further question. I'm quite open to consider it, but it's a new point, isn't it? I mean, for the moment, I was only thinking about silencing it because up here, well, it's so damned embarrassing. May I kill it? Well, there's some time to discuss that later. <laughs> there is no time. May I kill it? Please, I never meant to be such a nuisance. Not the nuisance. what nuisance. Please, really, don't bother. Look, it's gone to sleep of its own um, accord. Accord. I'm sure it'll be all right now. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> May I kill it? Honestly, I don't think there's that um, the slightest necessity the slightest necessity for that I'm sure I shall be able to keep it in order now I think the gradual gradual process would be far better than killing it the <laughs> gradual process be of no use to at all don't you think so oh that was your line don't you think yeah, so yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, don't you think so? Oh, don't you think so? Well, I'll think, well, I'll think over that you said very carefully. I honestly will, in fact, I'd let you kill, kill it now, but as a matter of fact, I'm not feeling frightfully, frightfully well today. It would be most silly to <laughs> now. I'd need to be in good health for the operation. Some other day, perhaps. There's no other day. All days are present now. Get back. You're bringing me. You're burning me. How can I tell you? Kill it. You'd mm -hmm. kill it. You'd kill me if you did. It is not so. Why you're hurting me now? I never said it wouldn't hurt you. I said it wouldn't kill you. Oh, I know. You think I'm a coward, but it isn't that, really. It isn't. I say let me run back by tonight's bus and get an opinion from my own doctor. I'll come again the first moment I can. This moment contains all moments. Why are you torturing me? You are jeering. jeering at me. How can I let you tear me in and tear me in pieces? If you wanted to help me, why didn't you kill and damn the thing without asking me before I knew it would be all over by now if you had. I cannot kill it against your will. It is impossible. Have I your permission? The angel's hands were almost closed on the lizard, but not quite. Then the <laughs> lizard began chattering to the ghost so loud that even I could hear what it was saying. Be careful, it said. He can do what he's what he says. He can kill me. One fatal word from you and he will. Then you'll be without me forever and ever. It's not natural. How could you live? You'd be short. You'd be only a sort of ghost, not a real man as you are now. He doesn't understand. He's only a cold, bloodless, abstract thing. 
it may be natural for him, but it isn't for us. Yes, yes, I know there are no real pleasures now, only dreams. But aren't they better than nothing? And I'll be so good. I admit I've sometimes gone too far in the past, but I promise I won't do it again. I'll give you nothing but really nice dreams, all sweet and fresh and almost innocent. You might say quite innocent. Have I your permission? I know it will kill me. It won't, but supposing it did. You're right, it would be better to be dead than to live with this creature. Then may I? Dan and bless you. Go on. Can't you get it over? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you uh, do what? You do lie what you like, below yeah. the. Then, then God help me. God help me. Oh, God help me. God help me. Next moment, the ghost gave a scream of agony. <laughs> As I never heard on earth. The burning one closed his crimson grip on the reptile, oh. twisted it while it bit and writhed, and then flung it broken back on the turf. <laughs> oh. Was that the Gettysburg ghost? <laughs> yeah. Ow. Ow. That's done for me. Ow, that's done for me. For a moment, I could make out nothing distinctly. Then I saw between me and the nearest bush, unmistakably solid, but growing every moment solider, the upper arm and shoulder of a man. Then brighter still and stronger, the legs and back. The neck and golden head materialized while I watched, and if my attention had not wavered, I should have seen the actual completing of a man. An immense man, naked, not much smaller than the angel. What distracted me was the fact that at the same moment something seemed to be happening to the lizard. At first I thought the operation had failed. So far from dying, the creature was still struggling and even growing bigger as it struggled. And as it grew, it changed. Its hinder parts grew rounder. The tail, still flickering, became a tail of hair that flicked, flickered between huge and glossy buttocks. Suddenly, I started back, rubbing my eyes. What stood before me was the greatest stallion I had ever seen. Silvery white, but with mane and tail of gold. It was smooth and shining, rippled with swells of flesh and muscle, whinnying and stamping with its hooves. At each stamp, the land shook and the trees dindled. The new-made man turned and clapped the new horse's neck. It nosed its, his bright body. Horse and master breathed into each other's nostrils. The man turned from it, flung himself at the feet of the burning one, and embraced them. When he rose, I thought his face shone, like, shone with tears, but it may have been only the liquid love and brightness which flowed from him. I had not long to think about it. In joyous haste, the young man leaped upon the horse's back. Turning in his seat, he waved a farewell, then nudged the stallion with his heels. They were off before I knew well what had happened. There was riding, if I, there was riding if you like. I came out as quickly as I could from among the bushes to follow them with my eyes, but already they were only like a shooting star far off on the green plain and soon among the foothills of the mountains. Then, still like a star, I saw them winding up, scaling what seemed impossible steeps quicker every moment till near the dim brow of the landscape so high that I must strain my neck to see them, they vanished, bright themselves into the rose brightness of the everlasting morning. While I still watched, I noticed that the whole plain and forest were shaking with the sound which in our world would have been too large to hear, but there I could take it with joy. I knew it was not the solid people who were singing, it was the voice of that earth those woods and those waters, a strange, archaic, inorganic noise that came from all directions at once. The nature or arch nature of that land rejoiced to have once more ridden, to have been once more ridden and therefore consummated in the person of the horse. Okay, thank you, girl.
Person was actually an angel, not not one of the solid people. That was clarified in there. That's why it was yeah. bright. That's right, it was yeah, bright right. and, and, and had the ability to to do things to the person, but right. only with the individual's permission. Right. Okay, so what what does the, the, the lizard represent in this case? <coughs> okay, think of it in these terms. It's I'm, like wait. Uh, it's like some vice that this guy had. It's her fallen nature. It's her old nature. It's what, it's what I began to see develop. It's her whole nature because you said, if you kill my old nature that I'm holding on to desperately and I'm not willing to give it up, you're going to kill me. I'm going to die right along with it. Right. And I can't give it up. Right. But I, I think another way to apply it is mm -hmm. that it's like some vice that you have. Some vice, yeah. You know, is it... I can't turn loose. Is it drink or drugs or yeah. buying lotto tickets or you know whatever your thing is? Right. Something innocent like blue bell ice cream or whatever. What you? <laughs> and that's yeah. 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 And yeah. careful. Yeah. But, but the idea. Yeah. But 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 the idea is that if it's something that you know controls you, right. as you opposed it. to you controlling yeah. it, you know that's that's the thing that that we need to get rid of. And so, and, and uh, remember their choices, like we talked about. Right. Something got every single one of them that's on that bus where they are. Yeah. And as we, and as it, and as that's revealed all along the way, and the layers are peeled back, you see what those things are. Yeah. And with mm -hmm. her, it's uh, it's this uh, vice or fallen nature that's yeah. that uh, she's not willing to. Right. Turn loose. So the, the um. The, the mother who lost her son. You know, it was the the son that she placed above above God, mm -hmm. so she had that inverted. Mm -hmm. This person with with the lizard, you know, it's a something, mm -hmm. and and it's uh, you know it's got that person, but it's you know what's true in both cases is that 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 God must have the supreme place, and we must. You know, be willing to give up everything else and you know there's this imagery of things dying and so when you think back to what Jesus said about you know if your right eye causes you to sin pluck it out you know so there's the idea that you know this thing if it's causing me to sin I've got to kill it you know so it's it's this whole idea of dying to self and and killing these things off you know that's that's the thing we keep seeing here yeah, and that's what that's what Paul said. You know, you uh, I die daily. You know, yeah. I, and, and so mm -hmm. so this person was right in that it, it'll kill me also. You, we have to to die to self continually. Right. But but then see the other the other the happier part of the story is that once once we let God have His way mm -hmm. and purge us of whatever this is. Whether you think of it as your 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 uh, an angel was trying to get that over to her. Right. Uh, yeah. The woman who was lost lost her son and lost everything. Yeah. But right. the woman who is saved and loses a son loses nothing. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. But but also so then but then the the, the dead lizard, mm -hmm. you know, becomes something magnificent. Yeah. Uh, the white horse is a, a picture of white of righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Born born from. Born from the fact that, uh, uh, that, like you said, getting solider, solider, yeah. or the change of way, change of thought, change of, yeah. of uh, a choice. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then once, once the guy let let the lizard be killed, mm -hmm. see his transformation was complete. He went from being just a, a ghost into something really solid and beautiful. And 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 what what had been a weakness. Right became a strength as he allowed it to be yeah. killed and redeemed. Yeah. Right. Paul echoed what he said, uh, it is no longer I live, who, but Christ who yeah. lives in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to die to something. Of course, yeah. that, that whole idea is that someone who has come from 
purgatory, I suppose, to this spot actually makes the dawn into heaven. Yeah. For us, right. we understand that this can't happen. Yeah. One, right. Once you have, yeah, right. have died, oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. the end. You, you don't get another chance. Yeah, right. and again, that's not the, the, the point of the book is not to try to define mm -hmm. a, a different access into heaven, but you see how he, he uses the story to illustrate a, a truth for us. In our well, day. yeah, what we need to be doing here on earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to do it before we die. Yeah. But yeah. these are the choices we have. We, right. we must yeah. make. These are our choices. Yeah, we can't yes. see the ultimate goal there because right. we know that he or she can never reach heaven based on their choices yeah. that they've already made. They made yeah. their choices. Right. They are because right. of it. Right, right. But that's the point of this book yeah. right. is that they are where they are for a reason. Yeah. You're right. Okay. And I'm it's tantalizing just... to see that the angel says, but if you could do this or do that, it would have been possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so time's up. Sorry, Lou. <laughs> save, save, save it for this one. Um, okay, so we we have we have two more meetings next Wednesday, and then the the Wednesday after uh, July fourth, and then we'll be finished. We squeezed a lot in today. Yeah, we did. We squeezed it in. I'm gonna go home and watch. Keeping up appearances. Let's have order. Lord, we do thank you for our time together, and uh, Lord, we thank you for the story that helps illustrate how we uh, uh, we need to die to self and to uh, uh, to let you kill off the uh, the vices that grip us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Did you all watch that, Maddie? Oh yeah. Well, remember Maggie's. Oh.